Hi guys, Kaiser here, and welcome back to Iron Kaiser Gaming. Now, if you're a fan of the Age of Empires franchise as a whole, you probably know that the man of the hour right now is Rome. A bunch of really exciting Roman content was released recently, both for Age of Empires 1 and Age of Empires 2, with the release a couple of weeks ago of the Return of Rome expansion for AoE 2. That expansion both breathed new life into Age of Empires 1 by bringing it into the AoE 2 engine, so a whole bunch of people are experiencing that game for the very first time, which includes the Romans, of course. And then in Age of Empires 2, the Romans actually feature as a brand new civilization, so Roman fans are really enjoying a lot of fresh content in AoE 1 and AoE 2, but that leaves the question. What about our beloved Age of Empires 3? Where is the Roman content for AoE 3? Well, that's where your buddy, the Iron Kaiser, is coming in clutch with some really exciting things. I am introducing to you today the Age of Empires 3 Return of Rome Challenge. This is a challenge that I'm putting forward to everybody. And here are the rules of the challenge. Step one, play as the Romans. Step two, actually a little bit of extra something, if you have the Roman Centurion skin available for the Italians, go ahead and pick that, install that for your civilization. Step three, go to the mods and download a mod that I recently developed for AoE 3 called the Classical Latin for the Roman uh, Explorer mod. This is a mod that I actually created myself. Uh, I happen to know Classical Latin. And so when I was toying around, I saw he's using the regular Italian voice lines, and I thought, ah, we can do better than that. So uh, I put together a little mod that gives the Roman Explorer, and only the Roman Explorer, so you don't have to worry about any of the other Italian Explorers, but it gives him uh, classical Latin lines. And I think I can get him to say a few things here. Pro Roma, eio, festinavo, ibo, consentio, opugno, teneco. And that's a little bit of a sneak peek as to what you can get out of that mod. So it's pretty cool. Adds a little bit of extra uh, authentic Roman flavor, which I think is kind of neat. So uh, go ahead and download that mod. Get that explorer on. Play as the Italians. And here is the challenge. Your challenge for the Return of Rome challenge is to play as the Italians and you are not allowed to use any gunpowder units except for artillery. I think, it, you know, you can make an exception for cannons, but you can't use musketeers, you can't use the Pasaglieri. Uh, you are limited to the melee units, the crossbowmen, the... Obviously not melee, but... The crossbowmen, the pikemen, the hussar. Um, and... Go into the deck here. I've got a deck titled Roman Glory. I tried to throw in all kinds of things that I felt, uh, for one reason or another, fit the... Um, the Roman aesthetic and, and, and the style. So, uh, and except Machiavellianism, you know, Machiavelli, medieval figure. But, uh, the idea of improving your Italian explorer, because the Centurion is the most thematically Roman thing on the board, I thought, yeah, we ought to, we ought to put that in and, and make him a particularly strong, uh, character. So, uh, I put in a bunch of really exciting things. Here's the other part of the challenge, though. You can only use melee units. The game has to survive long enough for you to pick up Roman tactics in the Fourth Age. So you cannot end the game in Age 2 with a Pavissier rush or something like that. Right? The game has to go on long enough to pick up the Roman tactics card, and then you can win. So, that's the challenge. We're going to watch today's video and see how I can do, but... That's kind of put forward to you. I'm really curious to see if anyone takes up the challenge. You want to share your replays on my Discord server. I've got the Iron Realm Discord server in the link below. You could join the Discord and share with me your attempt at the Return of Rome challenge. Um, and just hang out. we got a bunch of people there that love AoE 3, love Age of Empires, and uh, would love to get some games going. But let's go and dive into today's video. We are on Finland as the map here. And you can see we've got an interesting collection of trade routes. We've got two right down the middle, two along the side here, and then uh, obviously some fishing opportunities, which could prove very helpful. 
I'm in the red, playing as the Romans, or I should say the Italians. By the way, something else that I'm, I'm iffy on when it comes to the Return of Rome challenge is whether you should prioritize and utilize the Basilica units, because, uh, you know, the, the Basilica obviously is supposed to represent the Roman Catholic Church, and, uh, you know, obviously the Catholic Church was known as Rome. It was an extension of, uh, I mean, without getting too far into the history, but the Rome was kind of split between the secular power, uh, which was, you know, recognized in... You know, Individuals such as um, Charlemagne and, and then later the Holy Roman Empire, right, was kind of uh, taking on that secular authority of Rome. But then the religious authority of Rome uh, was seen as extending into you know, the, the Roman Catholic Church. And so uh, I don't know whether you would want to prioritize the Basilica and just keep the Roman theme going. Or if you say, nah, Rome is, we're, we're talking exclusively about the classical power uh, that, you know, ended in, um, you know, ended with the fall of Rome uh, to the Vandals, right? So, anyway, you do that, however. So we're on Finland. We got some land opportunities, some fishing opportunities here, and we are up against, as chronologically opposite as possible, Boy Man, playing as the United States in the blue. And I'll tell you, that's got me a little worried. Because, you know, the U.S., what do they love to do? They love their Gatling cannons. Uh, if the Roman centurions ever faced Gatling cannons, that would be a, that would be quite the alternate history right there. And definitely uh, a decimation event waiting to occur. Fortunately for me, the Americans were recently nerfed. This, this Gatling cannon strategy was nerfed to where they're much more vulnerable to cavalry. And all around, just not quite as effective as they used to be. So, my thinking going into this, he's probably going to go uh, Gatling Cannons. For me, as much as I love getting infantry up, and I'll try to do some damage here with the BCA moving out, um, I recognize I'm going to need Hussar. I can't rely on Dragoons, and while I can use Artillery, um, you know, I don't think that's my first choice going up against Gatling Cannons. Now, the Pavissier is a really cool Holy unit, and we vehicle. actually just saw something really neat. I'm, I'm experimenting with the different formations right now. Because with the Pavissier, they actually get different kinds of armor based on whatever formation you put them into. So here, I'm being rushed by Tercio, which is actually somewhat thematic. The Romans had plenty of fighting against Spanish foes in Hispania. And uh, the Americans just so happen to pick up. We flip over to their view here. Let's look at their deck. Boyman's deck here. Fast Age 3v1. So he shipped the Spanish Immigrants card, allowing him to pump out Tercios. He's trying to get some damage in, but fortunately, Pavissier were ready. Let's see. He went to Philadelphia. A common pickup. Philadelphia Convention ships a Meeting House wagon and provides your... Meeting House with unique federal state improvements to research. Incidentally, I'm also highlighting another mod that I put out for Age of Empires 3, which I think is a really helpful mod. It is called the Better Church Card, Better Unique Church Card Descriptions mod. And it actually shows you in the description when I highlight over a, uh, a card that will ship unique technologies for your churches or your meeting houses, it will tell you right here what those texts are and what they do. Uh, that's not part of the base game, but it's a really nice pickup, and it is available in multiplayer. So, if I can advertise my own work a little bit here, I think this is a really good mod that everybody can pick up. So we can actually see that he could get Pennsylvania Pound, the first Pennsylvania Rifles, Pennsylvania Cavalry, and see what they do when they're available. All in age 2 for the Americans. Alright, Pavissier engaging on the Minutemen here. Uh, I think I'm in the wrong formation here, because this is... 10 melee armor, 10 ranged armor, 10 artillery armor. But if I remember right, there is a mode that I could put them into, which would just give them 20 armor for range across the board. Yeah, here we go. 
the uh, this whatever mode this is right here. Let me see. This is um, that doesn't tell me what mode that is. Volley mode, I guess. Yeah, I should just keep them in volley mode. And that would actually they would absorb more damage than if they than if they were in the mode they were. All right, I'm I'm hearing some. Is this the explorer? Okay, it's a sing no two tercio, hiding in the shade of the trees. And fortunately, I do see them. All right, they go down. I don't think they did a lot of damage there. That's kind of a waste. Right now, I have five more villagers. 31 vills to the United States, 26. And I think that's in part thanks to the unique aspect of Italian gameplay. The Italians, anytime you research any technology, they will pick up a free villager. So their, their initial economy, right, you know, second one, it's not as strong as other civs, but you start getting a snowball going by researching more and more technologies. So I've got a stronger eco right now. And I also have a trade post. I've claimed the middle of the map. Now one thing. To my eternal shame and to the detriment of Rome, that great Mediterranean power, is we do not have... And here we go. Finally, 11 minutes into the game, we're getting a dock up. That, that right there is uh, uh, Gloria Romae. That is, that's some Roman glory right there. Uh, that's what we want to see because there's a lot of free fish. A lot of free food there to take. And my American opponent has not yet taken advantage of the waters. So I don't think I have anything in my deck for naval power. Which is kind of a shame. Turing goes down. I'm a little concerned about this. The, the, the sharpshooters, American skirmishers, right? They do a bunch of bonus damage to infantry, and I'm going pretty heavily into infantry right now. One thing I uh, you want to make sure you do when you play as the uh, the Romans, or I keep saying the Romans, the Italians, but the, we're playing as Rome, right? When you're playing as the Romans, make sure you take advantage of the architect. Make sure that um, you know you, you that you have him building things, even if you just shift click and just have him build house, 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 house. Um, you know he produces buildings for free. Very good. Iterum vivo pugnare. Again. Uh, I live to fight. Yeah. Papal Guard. So here we go. G getting out some, uh, again, some of that medieval papal Roman power. Uh, and staying true to my melee theme, incidentally, with the Papal Guard here. These guys are really cool. They're hand infantry. So, you know, they're doing their spearman damage, their halberdier damage, right? But they also will absorb damage that allied units take. And uh, there's a lot of power that you can get out of correctly using your Basilica. It'd be helpful to keep that in mind when you play as the Italians. The fishing ships are out. Gill nets come in. Fissier on the way. And soon I will be picking up the bishop as my... Uh, as my next politician. And what the bishop does is when I hit the third age, I'll immediately get another town center. Right. Are on the field. Yeah, this is this is not good. The Vissier gonna go down. Ugh. Right now, Boy Man has the edge. 
And this is what makes the Return of Rome a challenge. You know, you're, you're locked out of part of your... Part of your tech tree. I can't go Musketeer here. If he starts raiding me with Tassar, my only real option is, you know, Pikeman. Which I do recognize, and I get them out. Fortunately, I think he's content to sort of stall right here and just knock out the trade post. I think he just wants to, um... He wants to solidify the control that he has right now of the battlefield. He's not pushing into my base. So that allows me to keep Nico going. I have four bills over him. I don't know if that includes the fishing ships, though. I don't think it does. 29. Maybe it does include the fishing ships. No, here we go. 9 plus 20, 38. Yeah, okay, 38 and then three fishing ships, yeah. So I've got 42 eco units to his 38. It's a pretty close game right now, and militarily, he's got the advantage. He's shipping in Apache Scouts. Where is that? It's not part of his deck. Yeah, there it is. Apache Scouts. Ships 8 Apache Cavalry, which can go into stealth. Ooh, nice. Uh, fortunately for me, um, you know, uh, the light cavalry do take bonus damage from light infantry, including Pavissier. So... That's going to be nice. And then we see it. The rolling artillery ships fewer Gatling guns with each use, but resets after the third use. So, with this card, I believe this is the first time he's shipping this. He's got a fort out. Yeah, we got to be ready for Gatling cannons. Awesome. He's trying to raid now, but I think he waited a little too long to raid. I now have a military up. I'm going to split off and send just a couple of pikemen to try to chase these Hussar. While the rest... Oh, no. I think we need to back out of this. No, no. Why am I fighting here? This, yeah, this is not... This is not a good fight, I think. Fighting under the fort. Fort Winthrop is doing some serious damage. Oof. It is not looking good for the Roman Empire revived here. Ready, Sons of Liberty. Ah, that's another mod I'm actually working on right now. I have no announcements on that yet, but I might have some ideas for some of the American voice lines. Too. Let's see. Does that interest anybody? If you uh, leave a comment below, if you'd be interested in getting more, uh, maybe some English voice lines, uh, a voice line mod. So I think that could be a lot of fun. Yes. All right. This year in Pikeman. Alright, where do we have? Alright, there's my second town center that's up. So we're starting to get both TCs going, which is great. My opponent also has two C TCs going, so. You've got the same idea. Elite Apache. Oh, no. These poor guys. No. Not long for this world. So, my strategy going into this challenge. I know that I wanted Pavissia to be my main unit. Crossbows uh, were my weapon of choice. Which is funny because in the Return of Rome, the, the Roman civilization AOE 2, archers are perhaps their main weakness. You want to go scorpions, and you want to go heavy into infantry. But in AoE 3, the Italians don't get access to swordsmen. And obviously, we don't get ballista in AoE 3. So instead, Pavissier, crossbows are my main unit of choice. And then I have Hussar as my backup unit to deal with the Gatling guns and the sharpshooters. So Hussar, really good choice. Let's talk about my deck real quick. I put in a bunch of interesting cards. Now, one that I've realized was a mistake. The Venetian Arsenal, I don't think is a really good choice. You're not going to use the Arsenal that much. Um, the Milanese Arsenal, maybe, just to pick up some of the... Um, I think you get like an infantry movement speed that are helpful. But so many of these Arsenal techs are about gunpowder units. And you will not be using those. I think there's one card in there for um, archaic units. And, and that's helpful. All right. 
This is pretty cool. Here's my game plan. Take the take my army, move them down south, start harassing Boy Man, get him to move his sharpshooters and Gat Gatling guns out of position, and that's when I surprise him with a Hussar. Right. Warp wagon moving out. Uh, not for long, you know. So he doesn't really have a lot in the way of a response to. Yeah, go in, go in now. Yeah, here we go. This is a great moment. Uh, at this point, Boy Man has the initiative, but I think my Hussar moving in and taking out Gats is going to be very helpful here. I don't know that the Hussar will survive this. Yeah, this is, uh, there's a massive win. A massive win for us. That definitely evens the odds a little bit. Dean, going down. I'm wounded. Fetch a medic. Yeah, here we go. The, uh... Infantry breastplate. I think that's maybe the one major technology you'd get out of the arsenal. Um, I think there's also one from Sar that's worth picking up, but I wouldn't make it a priority. And I think going Venetian arsenal, not the best idea. Uh, Milanese arsenal, not a good idea. I said this one in particular, maybe not that useful. Possibly the Venetian arsenal. You put it down next to your barracks, and that helps you produce infantry and cavalry faster. That might be useful. All right, it doesn't say how much faster it makes those. Carbine cavalry, I think is a mistake. If I'm going heavy into Pavissier, the carbine cav takes damage, bonus damage from crossbows. Wow, look at that. He's got 72 bills to my 56. I've got to say, even now, we're taking some fights, but I think Boy Man might be winning this. He's doing well. At least comparatively. I will go ahead and say, guys, uh, I've admitted this before. I'm not a professional AoE 3 player. I am not the best player in the game by any means. I have a lot of fun playing AoE 3, and that's why I like talking AoE 3 and sharing... Age of Empires videos, uh, but if you were looking for the optimum way to complete this challenge, I think there's a lot of room for improvement. Uh, I think maybe I could have done more damage early on, gotten up faster, and, and gotten a rush going that would have been a little more effective. One thing I'm looking at right here, I've, I'm floating a lot of wood. I should be turning around and turning some of this wood into artillery. And we do see here I am getting an estate up. But that's with my architect. It's not costing any wood. I should do something with this wood. And you can actually see, I do recognize I need to do something. I have my Lombards working. That's another feature of the Italian civilization you should not ignore. The Lombards allow you to exchange one resource for another far more effectively than it would be by buying and selling in the market. It takes time, but it is more worthwhile in the long run. The Milanese arsenal is sent. I, I, I think I'd rather go Venetian arsenal. You know, it's interesting. Okay, this makes it so any arsenal gives that bonus. So I could put one arsenal down right here for the barracks. Maybe throw down a second or a third barracks. That might be a bad idea. And then throw down some stables and put another arsenal right here. That's one way I could at least use those cards because they are in the deck there. I think cards that are useful, Shivoni Swords, when you're not using gunpowder, you're going to be getting into melee fights a lot more often. This is a great card to pick up. The infantry hit points is a must. Um, I like picking up Furrier, Advanced Trading Post. I think those are really good. Advanced Politician is a really nice card, although it's one that... I, don't, I think I forget to use that on this game. Merchant Republic doesn't hurt. 
If I had, if I took more control, if I had domination over the trade post, that would be good. Why do I not have this trading post up? I don't know, guys. I don't know. I'm sitting on 3,000 wood. Why do I not have a trading post up? Listen, I don't know what to tell you. Mistakes were made. A lot of Pavissier and Halberdier cards, obviously. Um, and, and bonuses for those units as well. I think that the Native Warriors card, for me, that was more thematic than anything. I know that the Empire, at its height, used a lot of mercenaries, a lot of Native units. Uh, you know, when they conquered Hispania, they made sure to incorporate uh, tactics from Hispania that were useful and uh, units from Hispania. Late in the Empire's life, they relied on those kinds of, I don't know if I should call them foreign units, but those mercenaries and those, uh, they, they weren't from Rome, they weren't from, uh, you know, that Italian homeland. They are relying on Germanic units and uh, Hispanic units and, you know, uh, infantry and cavalry from across the empire to kind of support the homeland. And so I thought that was kind of thematic. Uh, I like that one in, in my Roman glory deck just for that reason alone. I think we've got something good going here. He's going heavy into cavalry. And it just so happens Comandi. Comandi. the Pikeman can handle the Wind Hussar, and then everything else takes bonus damage from the Pavissier, which I have buffed to their maximum extent with cards and with technologies. Pretty good. Now, I have Robber Barons. I have Usury. Or Usury? I think it's Usury. Um, the, the classical Latin name is coming out to say Usury. But it's Usury. Uh, which is your replacement, I think, for a second factory. You don't get two factories as well as, as the Italians. Uh, but the very first card I'll be picking up upon age four is Roman Tactics. Because if I'm going to win this thing, I will fail the challenge if I do not have the Roman Tactics card activated. You have to win as Rome. And here we go. Finally, uh, the American... Kind of established a naval presence. Has a frigate out. Uh, fortunately, seems to have ignored my fishing eco. And unlike AoE 2 and AoE 3, I don't need a dock up. He is the first to the Imperial Age. It's not looking so good for me. But I do have a pretty big army. I think his army right now... Ooh, he's going on the offense. Boy, man, has 20 more bills. If the Romans themselves were actually from the Well, first off, you'd have to go with Byzantium. But even then, I think that's just outside of the timeline. You know, I think the, the best you're going to get... The only way to make this more Roman is if I had the... Um, I think it's the House of Fenar uh, native uh, camp that has the Byzantine legacy technology in it. And that would be just even more Roman. Here we go. Big fight breaking out. Look at the score right now. He's up 15,000 points. But... I have Guard Pikeman, Guard Halberdier Techs coming in. Of course, Artillery is out, but it's down. And here we go, Mortars of My Own. There's nothing that's quite so Italian, so classically Roman, as heavy mortars firing on a United States force, right? The Battle of Kanai, uh, colorized right here. Yeah, so this is great. I think we're in the right mode. No, we're in the wrong mode. 20% range resist, but I think we get more by being in volley mode. And, uh, here we go. Vent Hussars out. 
we're getting out a lot of pikemen. What is this now? That's 16,000. The points can be deceptive because they're giving Boyman a huge advantage. Look at this 5,000 wood, 3,600 gold, 6,000 food. I, I guess maybe one of the things is that he has a huge war chest. And fortunately for me, he's not. A lot of it's stuck in his bank. He's not using it. So, even though he has that stronger economy, uh, I actually have more units out of the field, and I think I've got the right combination of units to deal with what he's got. The Hussar trying to do damage to Pathissier. Now, why is it now I've got them in volley mode when they're in, when they're taking melee damage? I don't have the melee armor up. Doesn't matter. The Hussar go down. Pikemen are on the field. And the momentum is starting to swing. My explorer back up. Town center number one, under siege. are moving in. And, and here we see we've got one stable, one barracks. And that might be the death of the Americans right there. It's just the production uh, bottleneck that Boyman has created by not producing more barracks and more stables. And to be fair, you could say the same thing about my own game plan. Uh, I've got finally a third barracks up and two stables. I could probably, with how many, how much wood do I have? 2,000 wood in the bank? I could probably throw down one or two more. But three and three is better than one and one. And that's just allowing me to produce faster, even though he's got a better economy. That's one of your rules about Age of Empires, is as you're developing your game, make sure you're putting down more production buildings so you can get a larger army out faster. Otherwise, you might get overwhelmed like one man is here. He's still up 5,000 points, but I think that we see the momentum is actually on Rome's side. Champion Cree sharpshooters getting mowed down by Roman Hussar. Roman cavalry. Centurions, right? Uh, factory wagon moving out. Yeah, the factories are nice, but uh, we see here. Let's let's go back. Let's, let's go back. Give me out some horse artillery. A lot of artillery, which is which would be great if I were only doing infantry. But the hussar should make short work of the horse artillery. It'll take more than that to keep me down. Hello. This outpost wagon, not long for this world. I'm here. Royal Embassy. I wonder, what's he using the Royal Embassy? That's gotta be for the Cree kids, because he has no native camps in the field, so. Ah, uh, that's, that's. He's finally trying to get some regulars out, and I think regulars are the choice you have to make here. But even then. There's just another wave of Papal Guards, Pikemen. That's a deadly combination. Let the record show, I have the Roman Tactics card. Alright. Uh, all of the requirements have been met. I have not used any gunpowder other than cannons. Just relying on crossbows and swords. Just like they did it in the olden days. BC. <laughs> no, I, I know those numbers don't add up. Don't leave a comment saying that. I know. 
But at this point, uh, boy man, he's in a lot of trouble. He has, let's take a look. He's got thousands of resources. He could try to reboom here. And you saw he was going for the two town centers, but I think that losing the factories, I just find when the, when both factories go down, it's sort of like game over, you know? Um, losing those resource buildings, uh, it's just the end is nigh. And so there it is. The Return of Rome Challenge for Age of Empires 3, successfully completed by yours truly. Not the most um, professional game ever by any means. I think there's a lot looking back at my own gameplay. I say, boy, I could have done that better. But that is a win. And so now I put the challenge to each and every one of you, my AoE 3 fans, my AoE 3 listeners. Try out the Return of Rome Challenge for yourself. If nothing else, leave a comment in the description below, uh, in the video below, letting me know how your Return of Rome challenge went. Um, let me know how it went for you. How many tries did it take before you finally got a win? Uh, how did how to go? If you like this video, if you want to see more Age of Empires 3, if you want to see more AoE 3 mods and some more, you know, exciting things going on in that world, let me know in the comments below. Leave a like, subscribe to the channel, uh, we are really growing fast, and I appreciate each and every one of you guys. Thanks so much. For now, this is the Iron Kaiser, signing off.